get out of if Michael gets out of hand. <laughs> I'd say call this call this thing to order, whatever this I'm thing really is. Good. You know, where's Carolyn? Are we gonna wait for Carolyn? We should. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call this meeting to order. It's not a meeting. Um, can we get a roll call? Mr. Mendoza, you on? If I can get a hot mic, here there we you go. go. Director Barkey is absent. Director Maynard? Here. Director Searles is absent. Director Shade is also absent. President DeMarco? Here. Thank you. We, we oh. have three absent, so we oh. do not have a quorum. So okay. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to cancel our RCSD regular board meeting, okay? But um, we are still having, we don't have enough directors here to have a quorum. So if we don't have a quorum, we cannot have a meeting. So um, we're going to cancel the board meeting. So we can't talk about anything that was on our agenda, but we are going to have our um, presentation by Public Works Traffic. So um, with that, um, sorry about that, but we had, uh, we, we thought we were going to have three tonight. One fell sick. Um, we already had two directors that told us that where they were going to be out of town. So we apologize for that. Um, it, it's, I can't remember the last time we did not have a board meeting for not having enough directors, but we know this topic is important. That's why you guys are all here. It's very important to us. We were not about to cancel the presentation. Um, it's very, very important to this board what we're going to talk about tonight. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Public Works and Wei Zhu and take it away. Thank you. Yeah, you might just. Hello? Okay, good. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Wei Zhu. I'm from Orange County Public Works Traffic Engineering Division. And today we're going to uh, bring everyone up to speed of the ongoing traffic study we're currently conducting for the Rossmore community. Um, one thing I'd like to point out before we started is. Uh, this is going to be a little lengthy presentation, so it might be, I have total over 30 slides, and it might take more than 30 minutes or even 45 minutes to finish everything, but I would uh, appreciate if you can just be patient, and uh, I know you guys will have questions, comments, um, but we each slide, if you notice, on the bottom left, I have a page number. So, any topic when we're talking about it, you have any questions or comments, feel free just to write down the page number and later we can refer to it. At the end, we can do. Yes, sorry, we're, we're getting copies printed right now. As soon as we get them, as soon as Carolyn has them, she'll bring them out and start handing them out. Yeah, and just wait until the end, then we'll open up for you know, discussion. Q and A's and why not? And perhaps you know, uh, since we have a lot of information to present, so maybe some of your questions will be answered in the later slide. So uh, without any overdue, let's get started. Um, the uh, study, as highlighted on this map, is essentially uh, these are the requests that we received from the communities, whether it's RCSD. Uh, 
uh, the uh, homeowner association or some uh, residents, concerned residents, and they gave us different suggestions, different ideas. So we kind of bundled it all together and realized, oh, this is actually much more complex than we originally anticipated. It's just, a, you know, some whether it's a speeding issue or parking issue. So we uh, decided to uh, team up with an AE consultant specialized in traffic engineering, uh, which is Fair and Paris, uh, a leading consulting firm uh, in the nation. Um, we conduct this comprehensive traffic study. And then the study primarily will be uh, targeting the school area. We call it part A. Uh, is highlighted in green. That's the Montecito, uh, and together with the loop on the other side is a portion of uh, Shakespeare and the uh, Bostonian. And then there is a south end of Montecito, this segment, um, and we call it the Montecito South. And then there is Bradbury. So these are the main focus of this traffic study. And for the uh, first area, the main complaints are congestion during school hours, peak period, and also crosswalk safety. The area two, primarily because of the apartments and the condominium on the east side of the street, so the primary complaint is the overspill parking and also the uh, traffic safety concerns regarding speeding on Montecito and the side, dis uh, side distance. If people are coming from the side street, entering Montecito, looking through, uh, through the parked cars, they might have some blockage on the side distance. And uh, Bradbury, um, similar to the Montecito South, mainly overspill parking and uh, speeding issues. Uh, the alternatives, those are the you know, potential improvement, you know, those ideas we come up with. So for the area one, we come up with two alternatives. Area two, we come up with four, and uh, from, for Brad, Bradbury, we come up with one op alternative. And everything, um, we're gonna just go through this segment by segment throughout this entire presentation, and uh, at a later stage, we're going to summarize it. Um, part of the study, uh, we conducted a um, drone survey Basically, uh, staff has been out in the field during the school hours or afternoon dismissal time uh, just to observe the condition, but we want to have a better understanding from like a bird's eye view standpoint, so we conducted a drone survey, and that gave people a general idea of like morning peak hour, eight o'clock, school bell time. How congested is it for those locations? Um, so Claire, can you click on the first link? These are the YouTube links, so if anyone's interested, we can definitely share with you guys, and uh, you know, later you can look at it your own time. So as you see, uh, the time we were to, uh, particularly aiming for is eight o'clock in the morning. Um, this is the intersection of Montecito and uh, Shakespeare, and uh, basically looking south. The school is on the kind of a middle of the screen. That's where you can see. And there really isn't a whole lot of congestion. Actually, maybe you, if you can just uh, go before 8 o'clock, like 7.50, 7.55, around that time. Yeah, so a little queue on Montecito, as you see, but yeah, a little bit delay at this intersection when it approached the stop sign, but um, it really isn't too bad, really. And if you look further on Shakespeare, where the school driveway there is, uh, we really didn't see any congestion or any uh, queuing in that area. And this video was taken on the typical Tuesday, last Tuesday in the morning. So, um, too late? Okay, let's go backwards. Uh, Claire, if you can go to 7.45. Okay. 
So yeah, a little bit more uh, trafficking near the school frontage area. Um, But to be honest, um, we really didn't see any severe congestions. Um, these are kind of very typical you know, school time traffic. And there are, to be honest, this is one of the best we've seen. <laughs> Some other schools in the county we've seen a lot worse. But anyway, uh, let's move on. Let's exit this video. And then there are you know, afternoon and uh, different locations we took as well. We're not gonna, due to the time constraint, we're not going to go through each one of them, but you know, later, if anyone's interested, we can always come back to it. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Huh, why is it not working? Can we go to the next slide? For some reason, my uh, pointer is not working at the moment. Uh-oh. Uh, that's not good. Apologize for the technical difficulties. Okay, back online. So um, dive into the analysis. Area one, we call it School Montecito North, uh, which is essentially where the green lines highlights. Um, based on what we observe, uh, we didn't think uh, congestion is the you know, primary concern, but speed might be, um, since we have uh, children crossing the street. And also um, crosswalk safety. Um, Another thing that was not mentioned uh, as part of the complaint or request was active transportation. Um, we didn't really see a whole lot of students biking to school, which is a little unusual from what we normally experience in other part of Orange County. And especially recent days, we heard a lot of complaints about e-bikes or you know, e-scooters, that kind of thing. But we haven't really seen much in Rossmore, but doesn't mean it's not happening. So. Um, in any case, we think active transportation could be the future uh, for students, you know, come and go through, uh, to school. So that's something that's on our mind when we're doing the analysis. So existing, uh, this cross-section, I hope everyone can easily see it. Uh, we have uh, the four lane uh, for travel lane and then parking on both sides. The first alternative was actually a um, idea presented from one of the residents, come up from your own, <laughs> is convert a street into one-way street. So um, leave two lane for one directional travel and keep the on-street parking, but also in this case, we free up space, we can add the bike lanes onto the street and with even a buffer zone to provide extra safety for it. So we call it the one-way street and the 2.2 lane. The, the 2.2 essentially means two car lane and the two bike lane con connected together. Uh, and uh, PP means parallel parking on, bo uh, on both sides. And another alternative uh, that we evaluated, we call it the 311 lane configuration. Basically, we have three lanes for car travel and we have one lane for bike on one side and one lane for bike for, uh, on the other side. So we call it 311 and the PP parallel parking as well. So for the first alternative, uh, if you really um, are curious, that looks somewhat like this. If you can see it, the green uh, arrow pointing, you go clockwise in this case. On Montecito, it will be one way. You can only go northbound. And then on Shakespeare and the Bostonia, you can only go southbound. So obviously, this would pose some inconvenience to the residents, you know, in and out, ingress, egress, right? <laughs> well, we're not drawing any conclusion just yet. I'm, we're simply just presenting all the possibilities, you know, everything we hear gathered from you guys and everything we considered maybe a viable option, okay? So for parking, uh, this area is not 
you know, terrible. We have a total of 179, seems like um, adequate. Um, the option two, the alternative two we come up with is still keep two directional travel, but change the four lane configuration to three lane for cars. Essentially is initially we have two lane on each side. We don't really need that much. So we need one lane on each side, but in the middle we put a two way left turn lane. And also, in this case, we free up the space, we can add a bike lane on both sides and still keep the on-street parking. Um, this is a table kind of doing a comparison, the pros and cons. And I don't know if you guys can read it. I'm having some difficulty there too. <laughs> the columns is parking space quantity, so which essentially there's no change, that's the first column. The second is all to convenience which in this case, I think the, the uh, first alternative has the red circle means it's worse than existing. I, I guess we all agree that on that one. And the speed management, the first one is also a little worse than existing because now it's one way street, people can fly down the street without hesitation. So, um, and uh, congestion, well, for that case, then you should be able to mitigate congestion since it's only one way one way in, one way out. Um, and then pedestrian safety, uh, there's not much of a improvement on that notion since the speed will be higher. Bike safety, yeah, we add bike lanes. And uh, um, in this case, there will be improvement for bike safety. Um, the alternative two, which in this case, um, Speed actually would be better because we're you know, reducing one travel lane and also add a bike lane. So overall, in our uh, opinion, we think the best option is alternative two. And then there is a, a computer simulation that we created uh, from this alternative just to see how things will move along if we implement this option. So clear if you can click on that link. So this is not a real life video, but more of a just a simulation based on the data we collected and then the new uh, link configuration. Um, it doesn't seem too bad. Okay. Uh, the red marks is just crosswalk. Yeah. The coding in the computer system is just coded red. That's all. OK. Uh, move on to area two, Montecito South. This area, the primary concern is parking and the speed. Um, over, the time, uh, over the years, we've already done mitigations for speeding. Um, including adding the uh, radar speed feedback signs. I don't know if it's effective or not. <laughs> I rely on you guys to tell me that. Uh, parking, uh, there are concerns that uh, we might have overspill, more overspill parking from, from the future development on the east side. Um, existing parking capacity is already kind of as, at question. So let's take a look. For this segment, we evaluated four alternatives. The first alternative and second alternative is really coming uh, primarily focusing on the angled parking, which is an idea presented by the community resident. Um, basically on the uh, east side of the street where uh, we have a lot of condos and apartments, let's convert it to an uh, angled parking, which will allow us to increase the parking capacity. Uh, the difference between alternative one and two is that alternative one, we eliminate the parking on the west side altogether. So there's only angled parking on east side of the street, but instead we will have the three lane, which is the three one one configuration, basically three lanes for cars and uh, one lane for bike lane on each side of the street. Versus alternative two, we still keep the parking on the west side, so, but in this case, we no longer have the space to add the bike lane. So instead, they will be similar like uh, Foster Road. The bike has to share the same lane with the cars. So, um, 
And the alternative three and the four is that because of all this space uh, is so constricted, instead of going with angled parking, we still preserve the existing, which is parallel parking, but um, reduce one lane, travel lane, and then, you know, go with the three lane configuration and add the uh, bike lane, either on one side of the street or both sides of the street. So for alternative one and two, as I mentioned, Due to the angle parking configuration, we will be able to add some parking. Although for alternative one, because we eliminated parking on the uh, west side, only focus on the east side, we were only uh, able to add seven parking space. And the original parking space uh, on this stretch is 107. So 107 plus additional seven, is that significant enough for us to you know, make all these changes? Well, I think we can think on that. Alternative two uh, is more aggressive, since in this case we have the existing parking on the west side, but also convert the parking on the east side to angle parking, we were able to add 63 parking spaces. So 107 plus 63. That's relatively significant, I would say. Alternative three and four, keep the parallel parking uh, on both sides of the street, but in this case, we're just more of a playing with the bike lane uh, placement, whether it's on one side of the street or on both sides of the street. And uh, in terms of parking, this is, um, our consultant did a fabulous job. They collected so much data. Uh, um, they come out on during the weekday in the afternoon just to see what's the parking uh, demand there and the weeknight. So the weekday, they picked Wednesday 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, and then Wednesday 9 to 10 p.m. So those are the weekdays scenario. And on Saturday, which is the weekend condition in the afternoon, they also collected data. And as you can see here, that the bottom is, it, well, we kind of divided it into two parts, the part one and the part two. But if you're talking about the entire uh, segment on Montecito, total we have 108 parking space. And among the 108 parking space on the weeknight, we have 16 available. And on the weekend, Saturday, we have 18 available. And then this is the weekday afternoon. So it seems like probably the weeknight is the m highest occupancy rate. But still, it's not 100% saturated as yet. These are the breakdown. Again, technical difficulties, sorry. <laughs> um, we're not going to dive into all of these details, but if you guys are interested in knowing, we have it here. Yeah, could be. Maybe the battery is weak. Maybe, can I try that one? I can hear you. Maybe the battery's not Yeah, it keeps shutting off, apparently. No, it's on the... Hello? This one works? Yeah. Okay. Let's go with this one. Thank you. So uh, in comparison, uh, these four scenarios, when we put it together uh, collectively, you will see in terms of parking, uh, alternative two is really the best. We can add 63 versus the others. This one at seven is kind of negligent negligible. The other two does not add any uh, parking. However, when you're talking about um, parking, parking space, okay. So these two obviously rank the highest, has the most improvement. But when it comes to auto safety, one thing that I do want to bring up for everyone's attention is that uh, there are studies done by uh, ODOT, which is Oregon Department of Transportation, in terms of angle parking. Um, the crash rate 
the parallel is 50 to 70 percent lower than the angle parking. So there is a significant difference in terms of safety. Just keep that in mind. Are we willing to trade safety for you know, the additional 63 parking spaces? Um, and also in terms of, oof, shoot, what did I do? Okay. Um, these, this column is for pedestrian safety. This is for a bicycle. Um, as we can see here, these two options definitely rank the highest because we have the bike, bike lane added to the street. And um, overall, if you really, from our standpoint, we always value safety is the highest priority. So I guess our pick is option four. And then there's our uh, simulation we can play around later if we have time. But let's move on to area three, Bradbury. As we know, Bradbury, um, well, similar to Montecito, the complaint is speeding. Um, and also parking. Um, currently on Bradbury, there are 61 counted parking space. And uh, these are the counts that are showing. Typically on the weekday afternoon, we still have plenty, 41 available. Weeknight is a little tight, we have, but we still have 15 available. Versus weekend, we have 22. So again, as I said, um, so far, it seems like the capacity hasn't been reached, exhausted. So for this roadway segment, it's relatively short, so we're only looking to one alternative, which is, again, angle parking. How about we uh, convert the angle, um, the south side of the street, which is closer to the commercial area, into angle parking? Mm. But in this case, we are able to add 13 spaces. So the original 61 plus 13, so that's about 20% increase. But again, as we said, um, angle parking is a lot more dangerous than parallel parking. So is it worth it for us to do the trade-off? Let's just hold off. I will explain later. <laughs> so our engineering pick is keep the existing configuration, no change. So, as so far, you guys probably see the general idea that we're presenting here is the three-lane configuration, basically the three-one-one configuration. And why we are pushing for that? First of all, let's take, about, uh, take a look at the safety. Um, over the fa past five years, there are 17 collisions uh, took place. 17, let me correct that, 17 recorded or reported collisions. And uh, the leading ones is called a side swipe. You know, the, the top row is the collision types. There are seven side swipe collisions. And what's the, you know, why we want to do this lane configuration from the four lane to the three lane? I hope this is illustrative enough. When the vehicle moving, weaving between lanes to lanes, try to pass someone, speeding up and pass someone, and then they clip someone when they do that. So that's typically what happens. And in this case, you know, uh, obviously the leading uh, type of collision on Montecito is the side swipe. This can be uh, an, a tremendous improvement. Also, changing from the four lane to three lane, we can also reduce potential broadside collision. Like the top row, you see it. When the vehicle make the turn, you have to cross two travel lanes in this case, versus when we are changing into the three lane configuration, you only need to pay attention to one coming cars and then make this uh, left turn safely. Rear end collision, that's another thing. When you make left turn, actually when I, on my way over here, <laughs> funny enough, it's, uh, it's a close call. I was ready to start making my left turn, but there's another side street before this one. So I was merging into the left lane, but re realized the car in front of me, she was also trying to make left turn, but she was making left turn before my, my street. 
So she was literally coming to a stop where I was gearing up behind her. So situation like that could happen. So in this case, changing the configuration, making a designated turning pocket, a turning lane in the middle, you're not stopping the through movement altogether. So whoever moved into the center line, people know you're ready to turn, right? So in that case, take them out of the travel lane. Take them out of the fast driving lane. That's safer. And also, these are all scientifically proved. It's not something that I come up with. Uh, Federal Highway Administration already done a lot of studies, and um, they concluded the, cr the crash reduction can be as high as 19 to 47% when you do this kind of change, you know, basically reducing from four lane to the three lane. And also, emerging res uh, emergency operation. This is another a good picture for illustration. It's a lot easier for them to go through. Uh, study shows conveying this kind of configuration opens a more predictable and practical path for the emergency responders. At intersections, when vehicle making turn, as I mentioned earlier, you look at the green car uh, at the bottom. When he makes the left turn, he has to look out for two cars oncoming. But if the car, the first car blocked his view and he's not able to see the second car, then that could be a potential broadside collision there, right? Versus in the three-lane configuration, the only car you need to pay attention is the one car oncoming traffic in that lane. So again, this is a lot safer. Also for pedestrians, that's safer because Typically, well, the collision happens is pedestrians step off the sidewalk when they cross the street, and the first car on the top, that's what we call the lane two, the driver see him slow down, come to a stop, versus the car on the lane one, which is close to the center line, that car's view is being blocked by the first car. They proceed forward. That's when collision happens. So, um, also, another scenario is parked car. Some kids jump out between the parked cars and immediately they're in the travel lane. So the vehicle, the driver doesn't have enough time to slow down to avoid that. That could happen. So changing from the four lane configuration to the three lane, as you can see, um, <clears throat> the four lane, literally we call it the uh, uh, high friction zone. In this case, the four lane, that's high friction zone of 44 feet. The three lane configuration reduced that to 34 feet. So literally, you only have 34 feet, you know, where you have the potential to, you know, come across with a vehicle. So the distance is shorter for you to cross. And also, of course, for bike safety, in this case, you have a designated bike lane. You no longer have to fight with the cars on the uh, travel lane. So that's also a bike safety improvement. So existing uh, Montecito, this is a, a picture from the street, Google Street View, as we can see. Two lane in each direction, no left turn lane, no bike lane, and um, on street parking on both sides. What we are proposing, that gives you a, a good visual, uh, how it looked like in the future. You will have three lane and uh, a two lane, a two way left turn lane in the middle, and also we're adding the bike lane on each side. Um, actually, according to Fed uh, Federal Highway Administration, um, they kind of in encourage this kind of uh, configuration um, because they, uh, according to their study, people might consider, oh, well, what if we have congestion? Now everyone get, you know, jacked up and slow down. Well, honestly, for Montecito, it's excessive capacity. <laughs> um, for a roadway like this, you can accommodate parking, uh, uh, it average daily traffic up to 20,000 vehicles per day comfortably. But the, actually, the actual average daily traffic on Montecito is about 3,400 to 5,900, according to our latest uh, data collection. So we're way below that threshold. So there shouldn't be any congestion anticipated if we were to do this. Another improvement idea we want to put it out there for uh, you to consider is mini roundabouts. And the image on the left is a temporary one, and the one on the right is more aesthetic, it's a permanent one. 
and it's actually getting more and more popular uh, throughout the nation. It's already very popular overseas, you know, in Europe and why not. But here, for some reason, we're a little behind in terms of that practice. Um, the benefit of runabout, um, I also want to go over. The runabout reduced 90% of fatal crashes, 76% injury crashes, 30 to 40% pedestrian crashes, 10% bike crashes at intersections in comparison to the intersection that has the stop sign controlled or signal controlled. So safety, definitely, runabout is better. Also, efficiency. Um, compared to uh, intersection with signal or always stop, 20 to 25% more efficient than the four-way stop, 30 to 50% more efficient than signal intersections. And another hidden benefit is speed reduction because well, while you don't come to a full stop, but people do because you have to make the loop, making the turn, and there is an object in the middle in your path, sort of. People do slow down, and typical uh, speed around roundabout is about 15, mile, 15 to 20 miles uh, from what we observed. So they do play an a important role in slow down uh, travel speed. The bike, lane, the bike lane can go through, share the same lane as the uh, cars in this segment. So, based on what we just talked about, our recommendation for the area one, two, and the three is simply do the lane reconfiguration from the four lane to the three, one, one lane configuration and keep the parallel parking on both sides. And also, in addition, we would recommend to add the three roundabout at those three intersections to further you know, improve safety and also improve efficiency. And you know, we've already talked about the, the benefit of that, improve the safety not just for um, motorists, but also for pedestrians and the bicyclists. And also uh, reduce the vehicle speed. And in this case, we mitigated left turn queuing. So, um, give them a designated left turn lane, sort of. And uh, improve the intersection uh, capacity. And also, um, in this case, we improve the bicyclist accessibility in the way we're promoting the active transportation. Um, and before we come to a conclusion, I do want to mention that since our last meeting at July, where some of the concept is being already shared with some of the public, we did receive some comments. So I want to make sure uh, those comments are not overlooked. Um, like for example, the first comments we got, uh, it says, OC tried to force high-rise, low-income housing in the Rossmore Center parking lot. And the traffic study is simply a precursor step to achieve that. Well, that I do want to clarify. This has nothing to do with that. First of all, first of all that housing development is proposed by the cities, city of Seal Beach and the Los Alamitos. We have no jurisdiction over and we have no control over. Okay, um, so that clarifies it. We're not promoting anything here. If nothing else, the fact that we're choosing the alternative that does not add more parking capacity simply is kind of our way of saying that we're not welcoming any more parking demands to be introduced in the area. And also, um, congestion and the safety concerns uh, is contrived. Well, congestion, yeah, may not be that severe as anticipated based on the video that we shared with you guys, uh, but safety, Definitely, we talked about it, 17 uh, crashes in five years. That's to help putting things in perspective. State base rate for a street, four lane street in urban area with speed limit less than 45 is 0 0.66 collision per million miles traveled. Montecito, the collision rate is 1.34, which is two times higher than the state base rate. So definitely there is a safety concern here. Um, also, is the, is the uh, anti-common sense and it would just make these concerns much worse. The notion congestion related to the school activity too is ridiculous and it would only be 
exacerbated by the treatments. But I hope by now you guys are convinced that, you know, the, first of all, the school really doesn't have a severe congestion to begin with, and our improvement would only make things better, if nothing else. Um, another uh, comment that we received was mainly talking about beyond the study sc uh, scope, which is on the North uh, Rossmore area. And uh, I want to point out, because of the, you know, uh, at the time when we collect the comments, those are the focused areas, so, you know, we don't want to go scope creep um, after we started the contract with the AE consultant. So we didn't really expand study, but whatever we're presenting here for the existing condition, um, if anything get implemented and any um, improvement seems really effective and uh, we think that's appropriate to ex extend it to elsewhere throughout the community, we can definitely look into that at a later time. And of course, in this comments also mentioned that the school, uh, Unified School District did uh, a great job by staggering the t uh, start time and the busing, which are able to reduce the vehicle travel in the community, which I completely agree. And in addition, I might add, promote active transportation. That's another way to reduce con uh, you know, vehicle travel. The more students bike to school, walk to school, the less car drive on the street. So it will be good for all of us. And also, um, another thing was talking about the intersection and the Willingford and the Hegwick, and then later also talk about runabout for traffic circle could be more. Uh, yes, so definitely. The roundabout, if we were to implement at those three locations and they turn out to be you know, effective, then we can definitely move to you know, implement those ideas in other intersections as well. But let's just take one step at a time. And there's another comment we just received not long ago. It says, it is safe for a bicyclist to take one lane and a motorist the other, so this person advocate no change to the two lane each way on Montecito. And then the current pattern provides cyclists the opportunity to take a lane and the motorists can use the other lane to pass the cyclists. Well, actually, I beg to differ. In this case, it's two scenarios. One scenario, the bicyclists have to share the same lane with an automobile, a car behind him, versus I have a designated bike lane you can ride on the car can stay in their own travel lane. Which way is safer? In my opinion, the latter. Are you the bike? Yes. And also provide more uh, safety for those who use active transportation and move away from such a car-centric focus in Rossmore. Yes, I 100% agree on that one. And that's why all our alternatives for those three areas, we want to add the bike lanes. And also the last one, traffic circle are not for Rossmore. Again, debatable. Why don't we give it a try first? If you know nothing else, we can use the, the portable one, the temporary one, put it on and see how it plays out. And if it's really, really you know, effective and working, maybe make it permanent, more aesthetic in the future. The three locations. Already have the three dots, yeah, those three intersections. Page 29. Yeah. So, um, with that, uh, before I conclude my presentation, I do want to make a one more point. Um, I know a lot of you guys are very enthusiastic about participating uh, how to make the community better and uh, communicate with us. Uh, there's a, a, a good way to do it, um, a simple way, really. Um, I know there are staff change, or over the times you, you have to deal with different people at different times, and the message conveyed differently. So now County developed a, a online platform for you guys to reach us 24/7. All you need to do is just Google my OCE services, and then the first link pop up. When you click on it, then that's the screen you're going to show. Okay, and on this screen. Basically, at the top it says my OEC e services, and then the button on the left, that's for service requests and complaints. Once you click on that one, oops, sorry.
No, that probably you have to go through social media, next door, or you know, Facebook, anything. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So basically, uh, if you click on the the button that I mentioned on the right, service request, then you're gonna see a a list of options here. Traffic, I think, is somewhere here. And there is a graffiti, there are some other issues, tree trimming or street sweeping signs. Choose the appropriate category and uh, submit your request directly there. And it will come into our queue and it will automatically uh, be sent it to the different department. Because for us, for example, we don't deal with street sweeping signs, okay? O&M does that. Graffitis, tree trimming. O&M does that. So by emailing us, that will only delay the, pro the process. Going through this is a much better way to do it, okay? But for some of you guys are just so keen to get a personal contact with us, by all means, our email address is on it. So send us an email, let us know. You know, if you have any concerns, any questions, you can reach us that way too. All right, so with that being said, uh, thank you everyone sure. for patiently sitting through this lengthy Michelle. presentation. And now we can open up for Q&A. Um, yes, if I may, um, Way that's a great option, and um, myocservices.com has been around for a while, but they've taken it to a different level, like this morning. I think Maureen's here. We had a, a big down tree on Coco de Oro and Foster. Maureen texts me, and with a picture, I send it to um, OCE Services, the tree um, section. They were out there picking it up and, and moving it away from the street and taking care of it. So that is a great, great way of getting service right away. So thank you. Thanks, Joe. Weizu, how long do we have you tonight? As long as it, it takes. Great. OK, just a second. So I want to hear from everyone. This is your meeting, OK? The board, the board set this in motion because we got so many complaints from all of these things that um, Weizu is talking about on Montecito. Are, are there complaints elsewhere? Yes. The board chose through the traffic committee to isolate the Montecito corridor, okay? The board chose to send a letter asking Wei Zhu and her department to look at this, okay? To look at the problems here. And like Wei Zhu said, there are problems on uh, Wallingsford and everything. We may look, we probably are gonna look at that in the future. So for right now, I don't wanna waste you guys' time, but I wanna hear from you. I certainly wanna hear um, from the impacted, okay, the impacted residents that we've heard, that I've been hearing for for 10 years, okay, when you come up here, everyone can come up, and please come up, um, just state your name, where you live, and certainly identify that I'm an impacted. If you can go back to the slide that has all the, in blue, that has all the numbers of um, parking capacity. I don't know what page that is. Um, this is my definition of impacted residents. It's, it was on that slide, right there. Okay, so anybody that's living there, um, uh, Director Maynard and I would love, to, Aunt Joe would love to identify you that you're an impacted resident that is impacted by the parking, by the speed, by, you know, so maybe not so much the e-bikes. We're all impacted by the e-bikes jetting around. But I, the, the, the folks that are really, really impacted with the parking, which is a big, big problem, I want to identify you and I want to hear what you guys think. This is a lot of information. Are we, we're, we're not making a decision right away. Weizu wants a consensus from Rossmore. So we're going to try, the RCSD board is going to try to get that to her, okay? But there's no real timeline. We're going to lay this out. We're going to have other meetings in the future because this is a lot to process. So with that, anything else, Director Maynard? I'll go with the end. Okay. So please, come on up. <clears throat> we have the, the department here. We can just, you can come up and wait in line. Just name and address and please uh, reference if you're impacted. Right here. Go ahead. You can go first. Thank you. Hello, uh, 
and uh, my name is Nia Hartman. I live on Druid Lane. Um, I am an avid cyclist, and I use all of these roads every day that we're talking about uh, from a cycling perspective and also for my kids riding there. Um, my first question is with the roundabouts, will we, if you do those even temporarily, will you take away the stop signs so they're true roundabouts? Yes. Okay. It will no longer be stop control. Roundabout typically is yield controlled. Okay, so that's faster and it also reduces uh, 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 pollution by doing that, by exactly. not having the car stopping. Yes. Also, with the uh, road going from four lanes to three lanes, would we be able to reduce the speed limit from 35 to 25? Uh, that's a potential improvement which we cannot guarantee at the time because typically speed limit is established based on speed surveys later. We call it the ENTS, mm -hmm. engineering uh, Have you found studies. when you do these, these road diets, I hate to use that word because it kind of We don't use that word yeah. anymore. We use the road yeah. yoga. Because it's, <laughs> they, they, the roads actually it's better, do go. It's balanced yeah. in this case. We add bike lanes. So yeah. as you see, the configuration 311, you've added, it's total five lanes now. I know in places where they've done it, the traffic actually move, can move faster with three lanes rather than four because of the, the uh, you don't have the interactions. Um, so I'm just wondering, in, the, in other places where you've done this, have they been able to reduce the... Yeah, as I said the earlier, speeds. there's a number show 8% reduction in speed. Mm -hmm. That's based on some studies uh, done elsewhere, the before and after. Okay, because it would be nice, I, in my opinion, to get all of Rossmore to be 25 miles an hour, so that way we don't have to have signs everywhere. Well, now, now you can go fast, now you can go slow, that kind of thing. Um, the, the last thing is, on uh, page 13, on the parking study, you were talking about how many uh, spots there are on Montecito, but then there were, like in the residential areas, there was 800 to 1,000 um, cars parked in there in, in, in the different uh, time frames when they studied it. And if Claire, I think it's the slide before this one. Um, Is that the one you were talking about? Yes, the bottom line there okay. shows anywhere between you know, 995 and 785. Yeah. So those are the cars that are in the residential area that are correct. Okay, so if we go with the diagonal parking and you get 63 spots, it's really not going to have any impact on that 900. And so, so not how so I see it. Really. None of this will affect our biggest problem, which is all that parking. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so I have, I did see that you, you do show that there are some empty spots on Montecito that maybe could be, if, we, if there was a way we could pull those cars off of the side streets and put them onto Montecito and Bradbury. Uh, is there a way to do that maybe at the entrances to those side roads by putting um, extensions, uh, the sidewalk extensions, making it a little harder to go into those so maybe people will fill up the Montecito and Bradbury before they go into the residential streets. I'm not sure I'm following you. When you say the empty um, spot, what do you mean? Well, you say that it's not, it's not full, it's not Oh yeah, that's impacted. strictly based on the number here. You've got 35 So yeah, and total I have, and uh, let's say for example, the first part on this portion, I have 64 spots available on Montecito. Mm -hmm. And uh, the weekday afternoon, I have 19 spots available. And then weeknights, I have a spot available. So if you have those spots available, but you've got many more cars that have gone into the residential area, is there some way to get those spots on Montecito, Bradbury, filled up, trying to discourage those people from going into the residence with, well, those curb extensions um, can, can kind of make it uh, less desirable to drive into those side streets. Uh, I Honestly, when people are looking for parking, I don't think a curb extension is going to stop them, per se. Rather, they just pick the closest possible, the human nature, you know, whatever is the closest to where they live, mm -hmm. that's where they, they go. So um, typically, I would say they will still try to, you know, park on Montecito instead of going into the side street, which will require, you know, more walk okay. in general. Well, the, the, the last thing is on page 27, when you show Montecito going from four to three lanes, um, I do like what I see there. Instead of the straight line uh, for parking strip areas, you have those little white T's that identify specific parking spots. I think that can really help the community in that it can 
keep cars in certain places so they won't get too close to driveways and, and too close to the, the uh, corners, which has been a big problem. We've got people that have driveways there that uh, um, you know, the people that park on the street will park too close to the driveway so they have a hard time getting in and out. And if you use those little T's to um, identify where the parking spots are, you can actually give some relief to those residents. It will reduce the number of parking spots, the number of cars that can park on there, but it would also give the residents a place to put their garbage cans as right. well. By Again, it's, yeah. it's going to be a trade-off, you know, mm -hmm. whether you look cleaner or more organized versus you might sacrifice a, mm -hmm. a spot here and well, there. It, yeah, well, so. in your plan, you do have the, the designated parking spots. Okay, that battery went out too. <laughs> oh, uh, no problem. Turn it down way low because it very much carries. Just, just take it away. Okay. Okay. Hello, community. My name is Kimmy Sprouts. I work at Sprouts. Anyway, so um, my. Um, I just want to address a couple of things. So my idea was for like, um, I know in Long Beach and sorry for people that are anti Long Beach, um, uh, like the college area. So I grew up like also across the street here, Bellflower and Stearns, I look, I've always lived across from a park. They have the speed humps, not the actual speed bumps, but the widened humps. That would be uh, maybe for the speed, like people speeding. Um, that's an idea and then I'm curious we have all this parking that people aren't allowed to park there behind the Rossmore Shopping Center so I was thinking why not are we allowed to have a parking structure that's secured that's only for residents that's you know you have to be a resident to park there that's only as no higher up than the actual apartment buildings is that a, something that's able to be done that's actually a very good idea. Thank you. Which, <laughs> thank you for stating the obvious. <laughs> if we have designated parking lot or parking structure, yes, that would definitely parking. help, you know, release. That's really the correct way to do it. Because but obviously, that's going to be beyond the county right of way. So that's purely between the community, whether, you know, you guys designate a location to construct a parking structure or work with Seal Beach or Los Alamitos to do that. That again is outside of my purview, but as a traffic engineer, I would recommend go with that approach instead of trying to squeeze, you know, in a yes. few spot here and there, and, and it's still also, not really also, work. Also, I am an e-biker. Um, I choose to be eco safe, eco, eco, something like that. Um, but I do um, communicate with these these little hellions on their bikes. Um, can't imagine why, right? Um, no, but they, they are, they're a nuisance as well. Um, but, you know, we're all people. So I, I think that doing a, a bike lane is a good idea, but uh, doing the, the uh, which one was it? This one right here in the middle? Mm -hmm. I think that would cause probably uh, these kids to be more um, against the grain, going against the grain and riding down the center of the street, which they already do, but that gives them the, the oh, it's okay to do that, which may be um, detrimental to their lives and everyone else's. Um, I think the bike lane is a good idea, but having the, the parking change for Rossmore, I think that's going to bring crime um, as far as auto, you know, people who carjacking because it, that gives um, a space for people to come in and go in between the cars and lift the doorknob or the door handles and the car theft. I mean, it's already kind of, you know, bled into Rossmore with the catalytic converters and stuff. So I think that the whole jagged or the diagonal parking is not a good idea. Oh, that's a point I've never thought about, but thank crime. you for bringing that up, too. <laughs> thank you. Um, I just, I think outside the box a lot. So you guys are giving, you're giving me chills right now for my good ideas. <laughs> thank you. And then, um, yeah, the angle parking um, and then also um, the, well, the parking structure, but not, of course, not big, 
because we have a lot of parking structures going on here, like over by the racetrack, but just make, just to have it level with our apartment buildings and the condos and just not take up the whole, the whole parking lot out there. But my whole life I've lived here and they've, they've, that parking lot has never been full ever, even when we had the movie theater, Super Saver Cinema, you know. Um, and then we also had a movie theater where F&M Bank is, but I mean, that's, that's a waste of, that's a waste of a lot, pretty much. And as long as it's the, the residents that are, you know, able to use it, then it seems like that it would take care of all that. So thanks for letting me give my ideas. Thank you. Hi, my name's Dan Collins. I live uh, two houses in on Tucker Lane from Montecito. Thank you. Uh, so my question has to do, starting on chart two, one of the things you wanted to address was sight distance. When I read that, I read trying to make a left or right hand turn from Tucker Lane or Copa de Oro or any of the other streets onto Montecito. With all the cars parked there, you cannot see who's coming until you've committed yourself into traffic. And at that point, it's hopeful that everybody stops. Your alternative one, which eliminated the parking on the west side of Montecito, would address that, what I see as the biggest safety concern in the south uh, Montecito section, section two. It appears I would like you to consider whether keeping the parking on the west side is prioritizing the convenience of parking over the safety of the people driving and the people on bikes and the kids on e-bikes. And one of the reasons I say that is I've got 14 and 12 year old daughters who I have got to teach to drive in a couple of years. Right now the plan will be to make them go up to Rush Park to go over to Mainway and come down and at least go through that crazy intersection where there's at least stop signs. Not to allow them to go out there because it's just too dangerous for an inexperienced driver. So I'd like you to consider option one versus two or alternative one versus two with that safety consideration in mind. And I would appreciate it if you'd do that. Can I just give you the answer right now? Oh, or I yes. can just respond to that very easily. Yes. By the three lane configuration, that problem can also be mitigated. You know why? For one, when you come out initially, after the parked car, as I said, you're immediately in the travel lane and you're fighting with two oncoming travel lanes, right? When you make a left turn. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have to look to the left. There are two cars in two lanes. I coming. understand. Yeah. In the new configuration, when you pass the parked car, you have a little buffer, which is the bike lane, where you can creep forward. And that opens up your line of sight. And you only need to pay attention to one lane of oncoming traffic. Once you can cross that lane safely, it, the two-way left turn lane is the safe harbor for you to first get into that section before you actually merge into the travel lane on the right-hand side. So in this case, the movement coming, you know, making left turn out of uh, Tucker, right? Tucker, yeah. Yes, it's already but it's safer, the same, it's much the same safer. It's any of the streets. Right, yeah. so that's why I said, by the new configuration, your problem of the site distance blocking is already mitigated. To a degree. Well, yes, you have bicyclists coming along that I mean, people park right up to and including into the red without getting ticketed. So I don't, I, I understand there is some mitigation. My experience is I shouldn't say that. I have no experience in the new one. It, it, I'm not convinced it will be enough to keep. I've been there five years. I've seen two accidents happen at that situation. And I'm not convinced that the bike lane will do it, but any of what you had was better than what we've got now. 
do keep in mind that side of the street, according to our data, there are 56 parking spots versus on the east side, 52. So you actually have more parking on the yeah. west side. Eliminating that, we're reducing more than 50% of the parking space yeah. on Montecito. Mm. Are people willing to do the trade-off so on that? It, That's another it, question you, out there. You asked the question, yeah. yes. Compared to having my 12 and 14 year old daughters in an accident, I don't live on Mainway. If I lived on Mainway, I might answer differently. <laughs> we have a problem on Tucker. It's nowhere near as bad as what those folks have. Thank okay. you for your time tonight. Thanks for giving up your evening and coming and talking to us. Of course, my pleasure. Um, I'm Karen Swenson and I'm an impacted resident of um, Rossmore. Um, my, what I want to talk about is no U-turn signs. Um, I live on, I live in the area of number one, and what is happening, and I'm not uh, disputing any of your configurations of tra changing traffic. We are the residents. We live in this neighborhood, and we would like to live in this late neighborhood. A lot of the impact is residents going to different schools in the Rossmore area. A lot of it is people coming from uh, out of the areas, uh, Garden Grove, Long Beach, Hawaiian Gardens, coming in here. So we have a lot of traffic, but we do live here, and we would like it to stay a nice place where we can live and drive. My thing is U-turns. You know, and, and so the, what happens is where I live, if you take Main Way and go right across, take Main Way and just make the street go right across the baseball field of Rossmore Elementary and keep going over the top of Montecito, and there's a little street by the name of Loring, L-O-R-I-N-G. It's right across from the daycare centers. Okay. Um, it is... And with your, uh, the picture you took, don't take pictures at 8 o'clock. School's already started. You start taking pictures at 7.25 in the morning. Or no, we started at 7 o'clock. Oh, We just okay. didn't show you the beginning. But oh, okay. Well, essentially, what we try to show is the worst fragment there, okay. which we notice is about 7.50 to well, 8 o'clock okay. that time. Then I, but I'll, if you I'll want to that. see the video again, we can play it again. No, that's all right. Okay. Yeah. No U-turns. What occurs on Montecito, and I'm not going into any of your configurations of changing our, our streets, is the constant U-turns. Parents want to be on the correct side of the street to drop their kids off to school, to drop their kids off at daycare. So they just make a U-turn on Montecito, just right around. It happens on the other side. Let's say the soccer people. They make a U-turn going the other way. I want, and I've complained twice, and, and I've received one letter back saying this problem hasn't caused a big enough problem to put you to no U-turn signs. I would like some no U-turn signs on the number one, the north, Montecito North, where they cannot, these people cannot make U-turns in front of uh, Rossmore Elementary on Montecito. The second thing is they use streets as turnarounds. I'm using Loring Road, which is basically main way all the way across. What they do is they come in and they use it to make a U-turn. Well, the residents can't get out because it blocks up the traffic. So my thing is reduce the how fast they can go on Montecito, put some no U-turn signs up. Thank you very much and thank you for giving up your time. Thank you. And actually, I'd like to respond to that too, the new, no U-turn. The roundabout is the perfect solution to that. In this case, they can conveniently making the U-turn without impeding traffic. No, no, they want to make the U-turn right in front of the uh, right in front of the daycare. The U-turn in front of the soccer game. The U-turn in front of the first grade. Laurie is this street, right? And this Laurie is one of the that street. Yes. Yes. So, uh, how are you? How are they going to make the U-turn again? They just drive. They come up on a zero. I'm the car. Right, but with the roundabout, it's much easier for them to just move a few hundred. Wonderful, but how many of us avoid the traffic circle in Long Beach because we can't stand? Hi, Curtis Brazier, uh, 3232 Bradbury. So four houses in from the proposed roundabout at Montecito and Bradbury. 
Um, traffic reconfiguration, parking, that's fine. You know, it, if that's what the community wants, that's great. What I would like is for the community to recognize that they need to slow the hell down. You're coming past my house, I'm the fourth house in, and you're already beyond speed. You're already beyond 25 miles an hour. Slow down. We all live here, right? So I'm talking to the people who live here. Now, I like the humps idea. I'm an East Coaster, and, and we have humps all over the communities. It slows everybody down. So I take that on Bradbury over your roundabout at the end, because honestly, the roundabout at the end is taking away the stop sign that everybody refuses to stop at and giving them a green light to just race right on through it. My happy, my happy days are when those gentlemen are sitting at the end of our street ticketing the people who refuse to stop at that stop sign. And I know there's not enough of them to go around, but it would be nice if they were there every day. I'd take coffee right to the frickin' car. Um, the last thing I have is, you know, as a Rossmore resident, being from the East Coast, I, I'm not used to all this congestion and traffic. We didn't have all this where I grew up. Um, but what I will say is I've spent an awful lot of money on my property to keep it the way that I keep it. And my family is relatively large, and I would like for them to be able to park in front of my house. And you're showing 26 parking spaces on Bradbury on that stretch. Who's planning on using those? Is that just the community overflow when, when other people are coming in and we're just supposed to move our cars further away from our houses? Our I'd prefer to have a permitting system for Rossmore. Yeah. If you're, if you're, what's that? I, I like the idea of, you know, putting it on a little sticker on the car and, and park where you're supposed to park. And honestly, stop the people from parking on the corners. They're parking on the corners every single night on Montecito and nobody ever tickets anybody. So we have problems, minor, honestly, in the grand scheme of first world problems. Um, but yeah, slow down on my street, please. Put some humps in. Make sure I got parking, and I'll call it a day. Thanks. Hello, everybody. I'm Nina McMullen. I live right by Dan. Hi, Dan. I didn't see you back there. I've been there since 1978 with my husband. We raised four children on one of the busiest streets. I surveyed the area. I looked at probably 40 houses on quiet streets. But this house had the right price. We moved in. Our kids learned street safety. Um, it's very busy there. We have a, a shared neighbor that has multiple, multiple adults living in one residence, and they all have cars. We, uh, I'm happy that the gym didn't go in for the condo people. I'm happy for that, very happy. Uh, but they kicked everybody out of that parking. And I, I would like to ask the question, I think in the condos that are right there adjacent to um, Main Way, Tucker. I'm on Tucker, three houses in from Montecito. And so anybody that's on this board has come down my street, seen a lot of congestion there, including a couple of RVs, which we love. These neighbors love each other. They enjoy their RVs. We enjoy that they enjoy that, and they should. But we had all that parking. I'm happy to see the red curbs, that they're backing those cars up a little bit. We raised four kids, they all learned to drive, they all had to go out on that street, and they all had the same, uh, they had a couple fender, bumper, you know, fender benders that, uh, that happened because of that, near misses. And um, I had workers at my house saying, we can't believe how dangerous it is to take a left turn out of the street. And I agree. Um, a lot of things happen. Um, since they closed all the parking behind those condos, where do you think those people park? I've seen young girls with their black aprons coming from a restaurant at one o'clock in the morning walking to, their, to the condos. They're Seal Beach, we're Rossmore. I would applaud giving stickers uh, parking that we are residents and then let them figure out, let Seal Beach figure out. It doesn't affect Seal Beach down, down south in that part of Seal Beach. It doesn't affect anybody that lives anywhere in Seal Beach, it affects us. And that's a sad state, that's just the way it is. We moved in knowing that was all Seal Beach, but we have no rights, we have no say so, and they're all parking on our street. It's very congested, it's very dangerous. Um, most of our neighbors have instructed their kids to go, not to go out on Montecito, but to go around, all the way around, to Main Way to get out of our neighborhood. 
Another thing I just want to say, I don't see any parents here because parents are home with their kids where they should be. But grandparents, maybe you're like me. I pick my grandkids up at these schools. And the times that you showed for Rossmore School has nothing to do with what I see when I pick them up and when I drop them off quite frequently. And there's a long line of cars. There's a long line of cars. Everybody comes early to get their precious kids. People don't let their kids ride bikes anymore. We're all protecting our children because we're afraid for them. So we, have, we see that people are driving all of their children to school most of the time. And I get that. My kids grew up here and they rode their bikes to down Tucker and all around Rossmore all the time, but we don't let our kids stray that far anymore so that life has changed. So I would love to perhaps to have the 311. I'm not sure, but that was a good suggestion I'd never heard of. Um, I love that the Orange County, I believe, uh, you told me that Orange County is the one that put those red curbs so that the cars couldn't come out to the point. They still go over it, but it helps. It is a help. So there you go. I think parking stickers for Rossmore. Uh, hi, my name is Travis. I'm from North Rossmore, or so not by a Montecito that often, but I saw two things that did have me a little concerned. Opening doors with parallel parking with cyclists can result in the cyclists going over the handlebars and getting pretty badly injured. And the other, uh, uh, oh, right, the other concern was for the comments about cyclists sharing the road for cars, as you said, they're 2,000 pounds of steel and composite. It's not safe to do that, like to the point where if you make that the rule, people will just ignore it. I know I would. But uh, generally, I will only share the road at like 10.30 or 11 at night to very early morning, like four or five. Other than that, too dangerous, won't do it. So just wanted to add that. Thank you. That's a completely different issue, the permit parking. Okay. Completely different. We, we can, we, that's another whole meeting. Okay. But we have talked about it. And we have talked about it with Weizu. So, Hi, my name is Matt Masterson. I'm on 12502. I'm part of the condos. <laughs> I'm in the condos. It's my daughter's condo. We, we're renting it from her to help her out. We do have a parking spot, and we do park on Montecito. There is clearly not enough parking on Montecito to handle all the condos. It's pretty clear. There is, we, we do park it in the neighborhoods. Guilty is charged. There's nowhere else to park. What I, I don't know what the Seal Beach and the uh, Rossmore issue is with because our parking in Coles. I've heard that someone owns the coal parking structure. We are not allowed to park there past 10 o'clock at night. That park, I look at that parking structure or that parking uh, section all day long. If you find 10 cars in it on any one day, yeah, you're, that's a lot. The bottom line is there's plenty of parking if we want an area behind Coles, if we could use it. Now, I'm not, I, don't, I don't know the guy who owns it. I hear he's kind of adamant about not letting us park there because of the issue with the, the LA Fitness or the fitness center that they, we, you guys, that was not allowed to be put in. It seems like all of the parking, that's the only reason I'm here is parking. So the, all of that parking issue just absolutely goes away if we could use some of that parking lot. In 63 spaces, my goodness, there's gotta be 150 spaces back there if you just, if you, if you just uh, uh, I drew them in. Problem solved parking. <laughs>
if you, if you want to lose the condo parking. That's all I'm here for. What you do on the streets, whether you make us drive 20 miles an hour, 15 miles, stop 10 times, all good. Do what you want. So, I mean, I, and I'm not trying to, and I, and I appreciate the Rossboro people concern. I, I lived in Rossboro for 25 years. I now live in Seal Beach, actually across the street. So it's not like I don't appreciate your concern, but think of our condos and I say, think about us in the sense that, yeah, we got two park, but my cars don't park in the driveways. Guys, you don't park in your, your driveways either. So it's kind of, it's, it, we're trying to live through this. So if you could help us find some parking, we'll be out of your hair. All right, that's my point. speak in front of people very well. Kimmy inspired me. My name is Joe Perry. I live on Kempton. I live on Kempton and um, close to Montecito. Well, actually, Silver Fox, but I am so sorry for there's no parking for condos and apartments in the townhomes. Um, but I don't know where you're getting the numbers about parking spaces available. I am one block down from Kempton parked full during the day and then in the evenings they have no place to go in theirs. There's no room and it's filtering down second block down on Kempton from Montecito because we're in our spots and everything and they have nowhere to park. And they park on curbs, they park everywhere. I don't know where you're getting all this but they park any, sorry. Um, a lot of the ones, like they have a lot of kids or something, I don't know what, but there's not enough room for them and there's not enough room for us because it's always full. So I don't know where you're getting the spots are open. That's all I have to say. And I've been part of Rossmore since 1959. I've seen a lot happen. It's been more crowded, more congested. It would be great if Seal Beach would open up that lot to us, to them. but. Who knows, but it's never empty. <laughs> Kempton is never empty. And the closer you get to Montecito, it's worse. And on the weekends and the evenings, like when people are coming home from work and stuff like that, in the condos, in the apartments, in the townhomes, there's no place to park for them. So they have to go where we are. So it's, we gotta find a way to make it mix, but there's just a not enough parking, period. So. Good evening. My name is Alan Winter, and I live on the corner of Bostonian and Montecito. So I'm more concerned about Area 1, which is to do with the congestion around Rossmore Elementary School. So the first question that you may or may not be able to answer has any input been received by you from the crossing guards by the school there? Have you discussed this with all of the crossing guards that are associated at Montecito and Bostonian, Montecito and Shakespeare, and also by Rossmore Way? Has that been solicited? Is there any input or any advice associated with the congestion from the crossing guards and what they have seen? Yes or, yeah, yes or no, it's a simple question, ma'am. Well, basically we have the video, the you drone haven't. video, that basically shows exactly how uh, you know, tra traffic behaves in the morning and in the afternoon. We do have multiple videos. You, you, you may want to consider their actual input. Okay. To, to what the, exactly the input that we're seeking for? I, how I'm many sure. cars passing by or how dangerous students crossing the street? I mean, help me to talk to them. I have brought up the idea that have you talked to the crossing guards at oh. Rossmore Elementary School and solicited any of their input? In terms of how to improve safety or how to... Uh, do, you, do you want me to write the script for you or basically... No, but I just want to understand the objective of talking to them. Okay, the, the next question, ma'am, is um, has any consideration been given to garbage collection and street sweeping? 
and the impact upon that, upon congestion and the traffic flow. Because basically street sweeping takes place during the week, not weekends. Garbage collection is basically during the week, not weekends, which is when there's the school traffic and congestion around the schools. Has that been considered? Uh, no, because for one, that op uh, operation is not on our purview, and for two, it's not a typical traffic if it, operation. If it's not in your purview, it will impact traffic congestion. It typically happens during the day, right? Say again, ma'am. What time is the tra trash pickup typically take place? With, I, I, I would suggest that you communicate with Rossmore Community Service District to deal with those types of questions. Thirdly, or fourthly, in terms of parking and congestion, within Rossmore right now, there is a considerable amount of construction. If you're going to put park, you know, change parking, you're going to change um, bike paths, you may again want to find out how much construction is actually taking place residentially, whether it's mansionizing, whether it's local construction, and those sorts of activities, and how's that going to work on the congestion in and around the general area. My fifth question really was to do with safety benefits, and you were talking about 17 collisions over five years as identified in your slide number 23. Of those 17 collisions, it appears that three were DUIs. So we could sort of take those out of the general equation as how that applied to a California statistic, which I think you mentioned was these numbers were three times larger than the average. I think the number used was two point something or other. About well, Twice, 1.34 huh? over 0.66, so I, I can't hear you so well, ma'am, the numbers. It's about twice as high as the state base rate. Okay, so we've got 17 collisions over five years, that's three a year. And you're saying that's twice as high as the state average would be 1.5. Take out the DUI stuff, we're getting pretty close to the average. They're my comments, for whatever they're worth to you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you, Thank you for listening to us. Hi, Kurt Wheeler. Uh, first thing is it seems to me that the roundabout, roundabouts and the bike lanes are not compatible. Um, also, it seems to me that uh, with uh, the guy, I guess he just left, Bike lanes and parking are not compatible. Uh, a couple days ago, I almost got run over by a girl on the sidewalk on her e-bike going about 30. And I actually collided with a car driving down a hill one time, and they threw the door open. So if you're really obsessed with bike lanes, you might consider what they do on Foster, which is basically with the school hours where you have one side open in the morning, one side open in the afternoon. So, um, but I think there's a consensus here about parking in the Rossmore Center. It's a Seal Beach problem, that's why there's a parking problem, and they should take care of that. I think you could work, work that out with them. Show of hands. Yeah. Well, that was your idea. Just to clarify, the Foster the Foster Road um, is no longer like that. It's 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 an open. Good evening, board members. Good evening. Um, so I'm here from I'm an impacted resident of the Bradbury area. So I would like to you know put in a good word about that area and ask for a little bit more of a study and an emphasis in that area. I came in here tonight hoping that there would be a really great recommendation to reduce some of the speed on that street. Um, my neighbor and I have actually been one of those statistics of being sideswiped on that street. And so when I saw that the recommendation was pretty much status quo, I was just wondering what your thoughts were on that, if that's actually gonna address the situation that we have now. 
The improvement for Bradbury is basically adding the roundabout at the intersections of Bradbury and Montecito. But that's at the end of the street. The speed occurs and accrues throughout the length of the street. So what are you going to do to address the speed issues? I don't care about congestion. I don't care about parking. I care about safety first and foremost. What is the solution to reduce speed along that street? And if I can just say, Bradbury is a main gateway to Rossmore. There are no speed treatments in that area. You don't have speed dips. You don't have speed radars. You don't have stop signs. It's an incredibly fast street. And again, my neighbor and I have been sideswiped on that street. Aside from roundabouts, which does not seem to be very popular with this group, what are you proposing to do to reduce speed? You said speed was the primary objective for your study on the street because it's demonstrated that speeds are high. What are you planning to do? Roundabouts are not gonna slow the speed that's accruing from Montecito all the way down to Los Alamitos Boulevard. Actually, the speed reduction mitigation, we, um, Bradbury, we did do the lane configuration uh, about five years ago in 2017. Reduce it from the four lane are to three high. lane. And you said that the collision rates... The collision is on high. Montecito, not on Bradbury. Actually, Bradbury only have two collisions. Uh, actually, it was, what, um, total of... Yeah, two collisions in two years. So that's actually relatively low in comparison to Montecito. And what about the speed? The speed, uh, currently the posted speed limit is 25 on Montecito. Oh, sorry, Bradbury. Uh, on Bradbury. And that's the lowest as it goes. We cannot arbitrarily set the speed limit any lower than that. It's speed not going to be limits, enforceable. Speed limits are one thing, but there are definitely treatments that you can do to slow down speed. I agree, speed bumps are a great solution. That dips, easy, low cost. Is that something that you've considered? that is for some reason not presented here tonight? Is there a good reason? Speed bumps is generally discouraged in public streetways and because why? they slow down emergency response. Yeah, that's why the county current, the exactly. current policy Again, in the county, we do it's not It's a main gateway implement. to Rossmore. People treat it as a highway to get to all the other parts of Rossmore, especially out of towners or people who are outside of the neighborhood coming in to drop off their kids. They're well-intentioned, but they, they barrel down Bradbury. And I wish you could see that in person. And speed bumps, I understand that they're challenging. Um, I get it. But various neighborhoods do utilize speed bumps. And there are definitely certain kinds of speed bumps that allow for fire trucks to go over them rather than or have the speed bumps go in between the wheels as opposed to having to drive over them. It shouldn't impact speed. The speed pumps and then mm -hmm. the bumps to do damage. The speed pumps are the ones that you and I... So if that's just something you can go back... They're not very bike-friendly, though. The they don't need to go into the bike lanes. They could stay within the lanes of traffic. And there are definite... Yeah, I've the, seen it. I've seen it in the city of Newport. Weaving into it. Uh, but Same anyway, way. this can be something, you know, we can talk about later. Uh, right now, I'm not going to, you know, start a debate here whether why we don't use it. It's just currently the county policy, uh, vertical um, distraction from public roadway is discouraged. We just simply don't do. Okay, then I would yeah. just ask that you look into reducing speeds along Bradbury Road rather than just at the intersection of Montecito and Bradbury. That doesn't do anything. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your input. Hi, everyone. My name is Maureen Waters, and I live on Walker Lee. Um, question. I know the drone was last week, but when actually was the traffic study done? The traffic study is ongoing for a couple of months now, at least three months, uh, if not longer than that. We received a request from the residents and the RCSD back in January, I believe. 
And then shortly after that, we already started talking and initial assessment. Then after that, we decided to just do the uh, holistic approach and do the uh, full traffic study. So okay, because I was just I'm wondering how much of it, <coughs> excuse me, how much of it was done during the summer when a lot of people aren't around, when people are on vacation, yes. schools Typically, aren't in. So that could sway your numbers a little bit about available parking spots and whatnot. Parking it may or may not. All the traffic data that were collected before school ends. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I personally am in um, favor of the three one one. A lot of this is just statements. So, um, as far as the Tucker left turn, even the Copa de Oro right turn off of Montecito, um, there needs to be more red curbs parked. I mean, painted. Excuse me. And so I know I've told Joe Mendoza a few times, and he's, the county has been very responsive in getting those done, but I believe if um, there was more red curbs, not saying that people aren't gonna inch into it, but it's gonna make those turns a little bit easier. And um, as far as the empty spot, the parking spots go, people are gonna park closest to their home. So if they live in the condos down here, and there's a parking spot down here by the library on Montecito, they're not gonna take that empty parking spot. They're gonna go onto the streets that feeds wherever their home is. So I'm in favor of permit parking. Even though I live deep in the neighborhood, I'm in favor of permit parking. Um, let's see. And as far as the Bradbury lady, I know for a while, I don't know if it was the CHP or the sheriff, but they were doing radar and giving tickets. Why did that stop? Two of my friends got tickets. Why did it stop? It's like they, they, for two weeks they hit us hard and then we don't see them again for six to eight months. Um, even just cruising around the neighborhood. They've gotta see illegally parked vehicles. Why are they not ticketing these people? Um, radar, permit parking, more <laughs> CHP. And once again, I've, I come to the RCSD meetings all the time, and this is Seal Beach's problem. And we're trying to put pressure on them to solve the problem. But for some reason, they don't want to talk to us. They don't want to talk to Joe Mendoza. And I think a lot of it is due to the LA Fitness thing. But you know what? We as residents won that battle, so I feel like we can win this battle too. Thank you. I might move around. Is it okay if I take this mic out? Oh, it moves. Okay. All right. It's good. Well, good evening. I'm glad you guys all could make it because it's nice to see a big crowd. So, a couple questions for you. Do either of you ladies have children? Yes, I do. Elementary, middle school, or high school? All of it. Okay. Do you live close to a school? Do you drive your kids to a school? Do you drop them off? Do they ride their bike? They ride the bike. Are you comfortable with them riding their bike, however they go, wherever you live? Yes. Uh, okay. Where okay. we live, it's, yeah. It's That's fine. I don't, I don't need to, I'm not prying. Okay. The reason I say that is I live directly across the street from Rossmore. So my heart goes out to all of you on Bostonian South. You guys have a nightmare, so I don't live on that part of it. What I'm here to say is, there's a disconnect. First of all, thanks for coming out with your study. There's a disconnect with your data to what the people that live here live, breathe, and see. And what I'm saying, when you compare us to the state, we're not the state. We're a community here. And what's happening here, your drone didn't pick it up. Your numbers aren't picking it up. The time zones in which you're doing your studies are not reflective correctly for the full um, big story here. When you talk about going to a bike lane and having the cars parked along the parallel, the curb, let me just back up a little bit. A gentleman had asked why is it dangerous um, for angle parking? I can explain that, working in the construction field. Number one, accidents in parking lots or parking areas backing up. People don't see. 
People get hurt, people get killed. People get injured pretty bad. If you have kids riding their bikes in a bike lane, right next to the cars parked on the street, step back a little bit. You've got parents, since I live right across the street from the daycare, I see a lot. And in all honesty, it goes pretty smoothly, and it's basically 15, 20 minutes they're in, they're out. These parents are in a rush. The kids are in a rush. They're rushing to get them in the car. They're rushing to get them to school. They're rushing to get them across the street. I have to compliment everyone in essence. Knock on wood, I haven't seen an accident. I've seen some close calls, but they're really respectful of each other. If you have, and a lot of the kids that ride their bikes, there's not a lot of kids that ride their bikes, but there are e-bikes also, they're on the sidewalk, which is actually safer. If you're planning on, if you're talking about, now what she's saying doesn't mean this is what has to happen, so you guys gotta understand that. They're presenting their side. Doesn't mean there may be good points to it, there may be not good points to it. It's a group communication here. But if they're parked, have a bike lane, and the cars are parked in front or next to the school, sometimes they may cut off a kid on a bike, or a, bike, a kid may not see them. When the people, parents are leaving the school, they're hurry, in a hurry to get in the car, get to work. They may not see a kid coming behind them in the bike lane. Personally, I see more danger in putting a bike lane on this part of the Montecito. Also, I see that you're pushing the three lanes, you're pushing the roundabout, and you're discrediting the speed bumps. Listen to the people. What they have to say is valuable. It's worth hearing. Put your studies aside and put yourself in their shoes. There's the disconnect there. It's very important. Montecito from Bostonian to Shakespeare. The two lanes each directions work well. There's no need to cut it down in my opinion. This is just my opinion. If there's kids who are gonna be riding their bikes in the middle of the lane, you've got problems. You do have parents that are in a hurry to get to work. They are pulling UEs. So people aren't watching, people are busy on their cell phones, People are on tight deadlines. Safety is a concern. I invite you, come to the community at different times. Talk to the people. Talk to the crossing guards. They're a wealth of information. They see more than all of us see at times. Thank you. I don't think that I don't think the county traffic is going to do that. Nor I don't. I'll speak for you, Wazu. I I don't think she's going to. That's that's really us. Okay, that's really us. This is advocacy. This is political. Um, just thinking about um, several of you saying because this is a big deal. It's been on our minds, the board's mind. Um, just thinking tonight. You know what, why don't you keep, why don't we all keep all our receipts to Sprouts and to Marshalls and everything, put them all together and sign a petition to the management company, to the owner. Um, why don't we um, do something to, as a, as a statement, okay? These are just suggestions, okay? I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it. I can, I, I can help advocate as, a, as a, just a resident of Rossmore, but, that's what we're gonna have to do. We are an unincorporated island, a very tiny one, okay? So it's not like we're a city, right? But we're an unincorporated island. We have to, just like we all got together to stop LA Fitness, that's what we have to do. We have to all get together. If all of us want this, we could probably move this small mountain called, can we borrow your parking structure? And I'm sure the residents of the condos will pay for it. Right? Because they, they probably want their own parking space. There's ample parking. It's not important enough. We gotta make it important enough. County traffic's not gonna solve this problem. Okay? So the county traffic's here to 
They're, they're reacting, they're giving us a study based on what this board asked them to do, and that's what we're kind of considering now. Now we can expand it based on input. This, the reason why we wrote the letter was based on input. So um, we're gonna have a lot more discussion on this, okay? We're gonna have more meetings on this because there's a lot of elements to what Weizu brought to us that we don't have to, um, you know, implement all of them. Now, I asked Weizu, and I'll let her answer this. Do we have to implement some of them? No, uh, today's objective is simply just presented all the options that we considered for you guys to, you know, take it back home, discuss it, sleep on it, and uh, spread words. And what we want is if there are any of these, uh, you know, uh, suggestions had the majority support. I don't even think we can get a consensus, like 100% support, but no. if the majority support that we can get, yep. then sure, we can go ahead and uh, try it out. Yep. And another thing I want to mention is, I understand it, it's changed and the people are, you know, sometimes they're not comfortable making, you know, drastic changes. But keep in mind, these are just a striping. We do it every seven years. Even if you don't like it, seven years later when we do the restriping, put it back into four lane, we're okay to do that too. If you want to give it a go and give it a try, not saying that I'm really trying to sell the idea. Again, we were told to evaluate some suggestions and these are the solutions that we are here to present it to you. Do it, great. The county will spend resources on it to implement it. Don't do it, <laughs> yeah. We don't even have to do any work afterwards. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I am glad you mentioned that. That was an uh, initial uh, alternative that we considered, but um, from our experience, uh, most people are just not comfortable that kind of layout because you would have car parked somewhat in the middle of the street. But you're still widening it, right? It's the same thing, it's just their visual right, and, yeah. and change. Like right, we're not widening the street by all means, okay. but they're just kind of somewhat now end up somewhere in the middle of the road versus the bike on the other side, you know, between the curb and then the parked cars. So it is a little, you know. Wait, will this presentation be on your website? Uh, the PowerPoint? We can like send the you pictures? The, or we can, can you send, send you the PDF okay. version of this, today's presentation afterwards. Thank you. Joe, did you want to say something? Yes, I, I want to thank Wei. I know it's getting late. Um, and I know how much work she's put in. I know how much work she's worked with her, how much time she's put in with the consultant and all the data she's provided us. There's a lot of options. Wait, now let me pick your brain a, a little, little more. You've dealt in this area a number of times with different communities. What would you recommend to be the next step to start building a consensus? Um. Either, you know, uh, RCSD is willing to take the lead or the county can uh, take the lead of doing a maybe a mass mail out, uh, sending information with the proposal to all the residents in Rossmore and encourage everyone to take a vote on it and see, you know, each suggestion, how many percentage vote we get and then maybe go from there. I can, uh, we can work with you on that and mm -hmm. we'll figure out the best way to do that. Yeah. And, and we'll help do that. The other one is, and, and I know Mr. De, our president, Mr. Marco and Maynard have some comments. Um, the conversation with Seal Beach is not over. In fact, you saw me on my phone a couple of times here. I'm texting the city manager with all these points and talking to her. She promised to call me tomorrow. She, you know, she's in a, you know, kind of in the middle of the road. She can't, you know, she can't make the developer do anything back there, but at least I got her, we have her ear. And so that's not, those conversations are ongoing, trust me. So um, we're trying, but uh, you know, it's a tough, it's a tough, it's a tough um, road to take, but we, we won't stop. Yep. Before I answer that, 
Uh, Director Maynard, I know you had some comments. Go ahead. All right, all right. Hey, hang on, hang on. Tearing down condoms. Condoms. I've been listening. Yep. Um, I have a lot of the same comments that you've all heard. Um, I believe that the parking permit is the best solution. That is a political solution, not a public work solution. Um, but it is nice that we are making friends with public works who comes with a, a thought out plan, some recommendations. There are some good recommendations here. I believe that looking at every square foot and every square inch and knowing exactly what's going to be red curbed and what's not because there is a safety issue. I have long said on this board for almost a decade now that people drive too fast and the problem with Rossmore is Rossmore residents driving too fast. These are our neighbors. These are our friends. Everyone needs to slow down and I heard someone say that. I've talked to um, uh, my colleague Tony DeMarco here a couple times going, it's like, I almost feel like I should do a drive about a pledge. And what would the pledge look like? The pledge that I, uh, I have not written it down, but the pledge that I have made to myself and my family is whenever I see the speed limit in Rossmore, I always go five miles under. Because I was amazed that when they do these traffic studies, my assumption, and I'm not an engineer, I'm a CEO, I understand finance, marketing, you know, KPIs, et cetera, but when you see them putting those little street markers, I'm thinking, wow, if we all drive fast, we're gonna to prove to them that we're driving too fast and they're gonna lower the speed limit. And I found out it's exactly the opposite. It's showing that that's what the community wants. So let's raise the speed limit. So if you ever do see those little lines, call your friends, tell them to go real slow because we do drive too fast. These kids on e-bikes are driving too fast. Um, whatever we can do to slow things down is a win for us as a community. And again, the pledge I'm making is whenever I see the speed limit in Rossmore, I'm bringing it down five. If anyone also wants to make that same commitment, I'm going to try to figure out how to formalize it, maybe even turn it into a petition. But bottom line, if you want it slower here, that is within our control. If you see a neighbor and you see him flying down, you need to talk to your neighbor going, dude, why are you flying down? These are our streets. You had kids when that were little, just because they're in college now doesn't mean you get to drive like a maniac. Everyone, slow down. Um, as for parking, um, this is, and it's always been known, this is a sin of Seal Beach and their lack of planning when they converted apartments to condos. And then they made parking by deed, so some people could buy more spots than others. So now you have a lot of college students that four of them live in one condo, four cars, and they only have one spot. Um, the concept behind Sprouts, Coles, whatever you want to call it there, that is someone's property. It's actually a property manager. Seal Beach can't force them to do anything. That is the reality we live in. Um, I've talked to the owner. Um, it's actually owned by a company called AEW. That's owned by the uh, French Bank, which is the fourth largest financial institute in the world. His whole thing is about liability. He doesn't want to be responsible for getting into the parking game and then having something go wrong and have liabilities. And that's just about every other CEO in this world. That's their issue is how do you reduce liabilities? Um, as I mentioned, moving forward, I think we need more red zones, especially on the corners, not just a little bit, corners going all the way in. Uh, whenever I live on Tiger Tail, it's one block from being in an impacted zone. My neighbors on the next street are impacted. So technically I'm not impacted. But boy, I feel like I'm impacted. And I really go out for the people who live on Kempton, Tucker, who have a hard time. Um, and Wazoo, where this is going, is even though services isn't the same thing in public works, but when all of a sudden people don't have the ability to put their trash cans out because neighbors across the street from Seal Beach don't care and they're parking in front of a person's house and they can't even get their trash cans. When Seal Beach residents, and again, this is not a bent Seal Beach resident, it's just the people part of the problem, when people can't get out of their driveways, when all of a sudden street sweeping can't keep a person's home nice and clean like everyone else's because of this problem. So I don't know, um, somehow we do have to figure out how to get Seal Beach involved into this conversation and have them take some responsibility and accountability. 
Um, and that's where I'm coming from tonight. Um, but I did have one question on one of the slides, and I know it's, I never thought about a roundabout. I think they're funny. But you said roundabouts are more efficient. When you say efficient, what exactly do you mean? This is on slide 28. You mentioned that. Yeah, I think there is a study that I came across. But this. how do you measure efficiency? Efficiency in throughput? Efficiency in How many safety? cars can go through it? Safely, oh, so it's throughput. a time period. Okay, so it's a throughput. Yes. Okay. So basically they set a 15 minutes. Okay. For the intersection. I just wanted to know because it was a new concept to me with a definition I didn't understand. Lastly, on the term consensus, we will never get consensus, guys. And I've given up a long time ago on never trying to get consensus, but I think what we can do is we can get clarity. And to me, what is the clarity of purpose? What is the clarity of concern? And I think we all agree safety is number one. I think most of us, some of you might not think, I think um, speed. And I also don't think that all of our streets are bike friendly. And I think it's kind of the chicken and the egg on that. A lot of parents aren't letting their kids ride their bikes to school. I would never, my, my girls, by the way, are 23 and 21, but we grew up here with Hopkinson and all the schools. I would never let them ride the bikes on Montecito. We never took that route when we rode as a family because that's crazy. I'm glad we're actually calling it the corridor. And that in itself says there's a problem when you have a small community of 3,700 homes, unincorporated, and you have your own corridor. That is, whoever came up with that term, I want to thank because that really tells you what a problem we do have. And that's my two cents. Thank you, Michael. Wei, I want to thank you for putting all this together. Um, you're bringing your staff down here. We really appreciate it. Um, we look forward to continuing to discuss this as a community, and hopefully we do come up with a consensus. Um, let me ask you just um, your opinion after going through all this, looking at all these data points. The, and going along with what Michael's saying about safety. So the concern is bike lane on the left-hand side of a parked car. Um, there's definitely every car is going to have a driver, right? Um, is it safer to have it on the left-hand side? Because you did have one on the right-hand side where there were two of them, right? And then a little buffer area, okay? Um, that safer, would you say? From a bike standpoint, yes, yeah. it is safe. From the concerns you're hearing tonight, where the, the concern, I, I'm, I'm my, you know, my child's riding, down, riding his bike down, and I'm afraid that the a car door is going to open, and he's going to, you know, he or she's going to go over the, the steering wheel. Right. So the, your other um, option was to have, there was like a little buffer area, I don't know how many feet, but, and then there was two lanes, right? Yes. That's okay. the alternative one for, oh, sorry. Are we talking about the school area, the area one? Or yeah, area I think two? it was the school area the was school your area. example. Uh, Claire, can you put up the slide number six? Yeah, so that That's one on the- That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, so yeah. there's that little, um, with the parked car, so even if the passenger opened the door, um, right, the passenger, there's, how many feet is that, Michael? But this is the one that's for one-way street, though. Oh, then we oh. have, because we sacrifice two travel lanes, that's uh, allow oh. us to put, you know, keep the parking and also add the okay. two-way bike lane with the buffer. Okay, so. Yeah. If we were going to keep the two-way traffic, we don't have enough space for that. That's the dilemma. And have. you're not in favor of putting the bike lane next to the curb and having the parking next to that? I mean, we could try if really that's what you know, people are mostly interested in. Um, I'm not okay. ruling out any options. Okay. Um, and then the, the roundabout configuration, you still have um, 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 crossing, um, um, side. Cro Crosswalk? Crosswalk. Can't think. Can't yes. think. Yes, you still you have the crosswalk. crosswalk. They're, they're in, they're, are they in the same location as they are currently? They might have to be pulled back a little okay. bit. So, yeah. again, what's the studies on that safety having a roundabout, not a stop sign, when school, I mean, we would still have crossing guards yes. in that school. So, 
or that, at that time, but what about safety, pedestrian safety, when you put a roundabout in a, a street like, you know, a, a, a intersection like Bostonia and Montecito? Is there increased um, problems for pedestrians? What are the studies? Actually, the, there's a slight number, I do have that number here, slide number 28. It says runabout reduce uh, crash rate, pedestrian crash rate reduced by 30 to 40 percent, bicycle crash rate reduced by 10 percent at runabout. And why do you think that is? I'm trying to picture, I don't have to stop, I just have to go down to, like you said, 15 miles an hour. Am I seeing the pedestrian better or? Uh, first of all, Yeah, I'm just trying, I'm trying to understand how that's safer. I'm trying to get an idea of how the roundabout is going to be safer, because I agree with Michael Maynard that it, it, it's safety is right at the top. So that should be our number one, you know, kind of safety, parking, and then, you know, bike safety, stuff like that. But certainly pedestrian safety, a lot of us walk. And with roundabouts, it's not a stop sign anymore, right? So. Um, you're, you're slowing down and going around. How is that, the, the, okay, so study says it's safe, safer. I'm just, I'm curious how that. I could think of, well, I didn't really dive into the details of the study, but one thing I can think of is for one, people are prone to slow down when they approach a roundabout because it's not a straight shot. People can blow stop signs, you know, all, all the time, and that doesn't slow them down because it's a straight line. Most, you know, human nature really is the line of sight. If it's clear, straight, and nothing in between, you feel comfortable driving at a higher speed. But if you have many objects, parked cars on the side, you know, tree shadow somewhere, or, you know, some island, medium island somewhere in the street, then you know over there you have to be cautious. Slow down a bit and, uh, you know, go around it and uh, decide where to go straight or turn whichever where to exit. So typically the speed around, at runabout is about 15 miles per hour, okay? So that gives people more reaction time when they see anyone crossing, okay? And another thing is, well, for this kind of runabout, we don't have that benefit, but uh, in typical runabout design, it flare out a little bit. It's okay. a bigger size, right? So when you flare out, you can create a little, um, like a curb raised medium at the, the legs. That create a refuge area for the pedestrians. So you basically cross half of the street, uh, one half of the street at a time, wow. then cross the other half. So I'm, I'm thinking that could also contribute to the safety improvement for pedestrians. Okay. What was your question? Um, I'm a teach cycling, and one of the things we talk about in roundabouts is that a driver coming to a stop, four-way stop, you know, they stop and then they go. They don't have to really look at what's happening Is there any, just because there was um, quite a discussion on Bradbury, is there anything, um, any type of, I don't know if you, like any other, other than a hump or a speed bump that you can put in the middle of Bradbury to slow cars down? We can try the radar speed feedback sign if you guys feel that. The, the, they are they are fantastic, and I wanted to bring this up too. A lot of a lot of these issues, it's not 
everything on the engineering, you have to have some enforcement. So we lack, again, we're unincorporated, and, and my captain's still here. It's not the, it's not the Orange County Sheriff, but our, our, our patrols are by the CHP. So we are lacking CHP. They have a personnel issue, right, Joe? We still have a personnel issue, so we, we don't see our CHP. So the same thing with the red curbs. We can paint them all red. You gotta have enforcement, right? So that's another thing. Another issue that we need to work on and is get enforcement, get, uh, uh, you know, tickets written for infractions. If people know I'm gonna get a ticket, it's $85 or whatever, I'm not gonna park there, right? Same thing with speeding. It's not everything has to do with engineering, but, um, but I, I, I hear what you're saying. You can do a lot with engineering that's beautiful. Yep. Than, than with red lights. You can do curve extensions that are garbage. That just slow the cars down. Yeah. I like I, that's a that's interesting. That was that was in Austria, huh? Austria, Austria. Yeah. Yes, sir. Were they were they mainly in residential little two way resident or were they? Go. Let's go find some. Let look at them. I mean, the, absorb all this information. Um, again, we're starting from the turn on Montecito and all the way, because you're even talking about all the way out, right, potentially, right, if we come to a consensus, right, that it's safer to go down to two lanes, right, have a bike lane or not have a bike lane, still have parking on one side, not have parking on one side. It's, we just need to start, when you're walking these streets, like I've been doing, because I, I, we, we had like a pre-presentation of this months ago, and I started, I pay attention now when I'm on Montecito. So now that you have these figures, and we'll get this presentation, we'll put it on our website so you can look at them, study them, have money on your phone, and then just look. You think it's gonna work? You think it's gonna make Montecito safer? Yes. Yeah, I brought that up a few years ago. That, that, yeah, there are little LED lights. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We like you. So that's a good point, and I know that in your presentation, this going down to the middle, median, and two lanes would begin going north on Montecito on St. Cloud, right? Merge into one, this median would appear. It would slow down the curve because 
people go way too fast on that turn, okay? You just, uh, your tendency is to speed up, right? So the, your, although it didn't, we didn't really see that part of it, I don't think, but you're talking about going to one before the turn, right? Uh, it's called a tiger tail. That's where it, oh, okay. we begin Montecito South. Okay, all right. Yeah. 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 The, the other thing, and I know Wei Zhu mentioned this, the other thing too is we're talking, and I, she said seven years, but we're just talking about paint on asphalt, right? And again, I know, I know you, once we lay this down, you're going to want to keep it there for seven years, but it's just paint on asphalt. If we find that it doesn't work and we come to a consensus that it doesn't work, maybe they'll, we might you know, change it up a little bit, like we did on Bradbury when the median was way too wide, okay? And they listened to us and they changed it back. So uh, again, no harm, no foul. You guys changed it back. We really appreciate it. Yes? The one way is clockwise. Yeah, it, again, it's the trade off. The clockwise is easy for school. Good point. President DeMarco? Yes. My recommendation is we've had um, very patient um, employees of the County of Orange uh, Engineering Department uh, here uh, visiting us. They're here much longer than they would have been had this been a regular board meeting. Um, my, recommendation, What's your recommendation? my recommendation is that we conclude this meeting uh, and allow the public servants to go home. Thank you, thank you. So we're going to conclude this meeting, but the discussion's still going to go. Please just, we will be posting more of these meetings. This is very, very important to this board. But thank you very much for coming. And thank you, everyone. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, this is a team effort. It's not just me. Denise here, she's been doing a fantastic job, and she probably, you, you guys see her more often than me. She's always here, you know, taking pictures. And then that's Claire. She works for Fair and Pairs, the consulting firms. And she's the one that collects all the parking data, the traffic speed data, and everything for us.